Hey folks, Jeff Salzman here and welcome to the Daily Evolver. It's Wednesday, March 2nd. We are in the, I don't know, beginning of the beginning of the middle of the, I don't know what we would call it in Ukraine as Russia is poised to batter Kiev. And uh, it's changing hour by hour. And so I just wanted to put a marker as to what we're recording here. I am joined today by Corey DeVos, who is Editor-in-Chief of Integral Life. And so let me just start with uh, welcome to you, Corey. Hey, Jeff. Good to be here, man. Yeah, good to, so good good to, to have you. you. Yeah, right on. So yeah, so what? why I love to talk to Corey <laughs> is that Corey has, first of all, a really good integral understanding. And, uh, and also, a, uh, you know, we were just talking before we started recording. He's got his Guns N' Roses t-shirt and his Nine Inch Nails hoodie on because he is the ep epitome of Gen X. <laughs> the epitome. <laughs> the epitome of Gen X. And so, you know, I always like to hear your perspective, Corey. And so let me just start as we turn our attention to this incredible situation that is going on in Ukraine, that I, I first want to thank you and acknowledge you for broadcasting an episode this morning by Namali Pereira, mm. our mutual friend, where she did a uh, prayer for Ukraine that was just lovely. I'm was just it? coming I'm... off of it. Yeah. And I have a, you know, I'm still buzzing from it oh. in the sense that it does do one of the things that, um, you know, is important to an integral understanding of anything. And that is ha having a felt sense of the morphic field of humanity, mm. you know, and that when one suffers, everyone suffers. And that all of, all, all of the sort of suffering of the world, this is, you know, Buddhist or Christian has versions of this, is a portal into the healing of humanity. And um, so it was just lovely. And people, people with poetry, there was a guy there from Ukraine, you mm -hmm. know. Um, there was um, somebody who was working with an NGO. Uh, she, Namali led a beautiful Tonglen meditation that ended with a Tonglen for Putin, who, as she said, probably needs more of our prayers than anyone right now, yeah. you know. So I, um, I know you don't record those, so, you know, they're a moment in time, but uh, you're putting out great work. Oh, I appreciate that, man. And, yeah. um, you know, that was that was all Namali. I mean, Namali uh, came to us with the idea and the urgency, really, mm -hmm. um, to sort of create a special session where, you know, again, where we can just kind of come together, convene, um, you know, from the heart and just find a way to hold this together. I mean, I think that's one of the big challenges of all this is, um, it's, it's too much for any of us individually to hold. It's too complex for any of us individually to understand. And there's something about being able to just rest in a field with others, you know, other like-minded, like-hearted people um, that just allows some of this to, I think, move through. And we can notice sort of those areas where maybe we're holding a little bit too tightly onto a particular view or re reaction or what have you. And we can just sort of soften a little bit together and appreciate just sort of the full spectrum of humanity that mm -hmm. sort of thing reveals to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you and I were, again, before we started recording, we're talking about, so what can integral bring to this? And, um, and you had a great response and I stopped you in the middle of it because <laughs> I, I said, hold this and, and share this because, you know, I think you're expressing something that again, we all have to wrestle with here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, you, what we're talking about, I made the joke that um, this is the program of all programs that you bring me onto. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about something <laughs> just right. absolutely devastating like Ukraine. I mean, I thought we were going to talk about, I don't know, Guns and Roses or something. Yes, culture. We're, yeah. we're, we're going to get into the it. Superheroes. We've and, done and all what of I, that. And what I noticed, Jeff, and what I have been noticing really for the last week is, you know, as sort of integral content creators, there's um, a certain, I think, influence that we just sort of naturally wield, right? And for me, anyway, there's a kind of a pressure that comes with that. And it's a pressure that makes me feel like 
God, I got to figure out what the hot take is on here. I got to figure out, you know, what is that like perfect framing that's going to snap everything into place. And then we instantly sort of have a deeper understanding and that widens our heart. And most importantly, gives us something that we can do to feel like we're actually engaging with the issue. And, you know, sometimes that just doesn't exist. Sometimes that, that sort of fully formed integral response um, doesn't really present itself. Um, mm -hmm. at least not, not initially. And instead sure. it takes a lot more, um, you know, uncertainty, a willingness to sort of sit with the uncertainty of it all. Like this is just so massively big and complex that I have to be actually a little bit skeptical of any time something emerges in me that feels like a hot take because mm -hmm. chances are the hotter it is, the more partial it is. And the more it's leaving something important. Yeah. So a big part of me right now is just sort of figuring out how to sit with the full spectrum from crimson on up of responses that I feel within myself and, you know, figure out how that engages with all the various responses that I'm seeing out there in the world while allowing myself to rest in that basic uncertainty of knowing this is, this is too big of a problem for me to understand. And I can try and hopefully, you know, you and I, by the end of the show, we'll make a couple contributions that people will find valuable um, mm -hmm. in terms of how they are thinking about these kinds mm -hmm. of conflicts. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, more than anything, I just want to invite people to um, allow themselves to, to sit in the uncertainty, yeah. uh, which to me feels like um, the most integral move at this moment, at least the most integral move say, to know, me at this moment. Yeah. No, that, that has to be sort of a knitted into any kind of an integral view is we don't know. Right. There's a, there's a, there's a not knowing beyond knowing that is far more fruitful and powerful yeah. because you realize, and this is, you know, just goes right to the teachings of integral itself is that evolution is jaw dropping. Yeah. You know, evolution is brutal. Evolution creates forms that previous stages could not have even envisioned. That's right. So there's a novelty. So there's a, there's a creation that's happening and a destruction that's happening. And sometimes it's like in, E even general evolutionary theory, you look back at the epochs of time and you can identify what we know as punctuated equilibrium. Yeah. The things, things go on and on just the way they are for a long time. And then there's a big upheaval and a lot of new flourishing. And we're in the middle of that. So yeah. knowing that helps us to, you know, see the part of our mind that wants to grip onto any kind of an ideology or an explanation and to be suspicious of that. Yeah. At, at Integral, it's not enough to, you know, grab onto a hot take. Uh, although, you know, I do, <laughs> you know. And sure, I, I mean, we're going to have to, take you know, bring them all in and I want to give them all space. Um, and so, you know, yeah. so there we are. Yeah, and I, and I love what you're talking about with evolution. And, you know, I think that uh, my hope of all hopes is that this will be, this will turn out to be, uh, uh, well, I mean, we're, we're, let me back up a little bit. We are currently publishing an article by Rob Smith right now, actually, um, on IntegralLife.com that is called, uh, what is it called? Russia, uh, Russia is a catalyst for the transformation age or something yeah. like that. The yeah. title's escaping me right now. It's a really fantastic piece. It's a very carefully written piece, very sophisticated by Rob Smith. I highly encourage people to go check that out. And that's basically the case that he's making, Jeff, is that this is, you know, what we're seeing right now is, is a 20th century style of warfare taking place within the 21st century sort of social media ecosystem that we all live our lives on now. And that hits different, right? It hits differently than the same story would have hit 30, 40, 50 years ago. Not to mention 70 years ago during World War II. That's right. Where we got newsreels, you know, two weeks later. That's right. You know. Yeah. And one of the things Rob talks about uh, in his piece is how, you know, people generally, but particularly, you know, Vladimir Putin, I think, underestimated the power that Green actually has to convene in the face of these kinds of terrors, these kinds yeah. of horrors. Um, you know, I think that that, you know, again, as Rob points out, that's that's something that um, Vladimir Putin actually has in common with a certain segment of conservatism in this country, right? Right, and I think it's 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 you know 
the, the temptation with integral is to do sort of this like zoomed out perspective, this kind of, you know, a little bit impersonal, like, you know, what kind of optimism can we feel here? What kind of, you know, pain are we, are we feeling and, and so forth, but it's sort of zoomed out and it's sort of a little bit detached from reality. And then you zoom in, right. And you actually see sort of the details and, you know, the fact that this is taking place within the information age is giving access to all of us, to a level of, of, of informational granularity that yeah. just feels completely unprecedented. Yeah. And that is what the world is largely convening around is, yeah. is you know, so these, these videos that we're seeing that are, that are showing, you know, I mean, they're showing what war always shows us, which yeah. is the full face of, of the human condition, every facet yeah. of the human condition, the, yeah. the, the horror and the valor and the courage and the cowardice and, all of it. I mean, all of it is is here, and it's our jobs to sort of metabolize as much of that as we possibly can. Yeah. Um, yeah. I watched a video yesterday of a young woman who, you know, is probably in her mid thirties. She has three kids. She's pregnant with her third, and she's fleeing with her kids to take them to her grandparents in their grandparents in Germany, and then she's coming back. And she's coming back because she said she'd rather die on her feet than live on her knees. It's just, a, a, she's a very modern woman. She's a journalist. Um, and, um, and she said something that was uh, really, really gets to what you're talking about. Hmm. And that is, you know, so we have this, you know, medieval war in the sense that it's brutal to bomb bombs and people being blown up. And then we have this media system that is delivering it to, mm -hmm. to everybody. And, uh, and she said, this will end, it, we'll know when this ends, when the, West, when the West discovers how much of this they can stand to watch. Mm. Mm. And I thought, wow, that's a very sophisticated take. And she's right in the middle of it. Because, of course, the West could stop it. Right. Uh, in about you know half a day, uh, but at what cost and what escalation and you know it's um, th these calculations. It's like I loved Namali this morning. She offered a prayer to all the diplomats and experts and people who have to be making decisions right now. Yeah, yeah God bless them. Yeah, and prayers to the citizens of Russia. I mean, you know, this is yes. this is the other thing that we're seeing is 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 um, the fact that this is taking place now in the 21st century, and we have again this sort of informational granularity that we've never had before. It actually allows for new channels of empathy. I think that have never really existed in warfare exactly. previously, and that's that's incredible to me. I mean, that to me is like sort of the good news of the postmodern era. I mean, yep. there are these, you know, not only the new capacities for empathy. Absolutely. I mean, the, the green consciousness, it's all of the sensitive self. It's, That's right. you know, our job is in green is to feel the suffering of particularly people who have been left out, That's right. who are invisible. That's right. Yeah. And you, and you see that with these with these videos, again, that are coming out of Ukraine. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been really interesting to sort of see uh, the videos of the Russian soldiers who are being captured. And it seems to me, at least the way, again, the way it's being presented, and you always have to allow for like, you know, there are concentrations of power that are deliberately presenting a lot of this information in particular ways in order to elicit particular emotional responses among us. And fair enough. And I think yep. we just have to kind of be mindful of that as we uh, soar our way through this footage. But as it's kind of presented itself to me, it seems like, you know, I, I've been seeing the Russian soldiers really cast in, in, in two lights. And it feels like it's being framed in a certain kind of way as like ignorant versus evil. You know, there are there are some absolutely horrific videos of civilians being attacked, deliberately attacked by Russian troops. There are videos of, you know, there's this leader from Chechnya came out being like, we're coming after the civilians. We're coming after the women and children. Um, I mean, the, the, the type of stuff that we usually associate with the most brutal forms of, of warfare, no matter where or when in the yes. world we see, we see them. And then there are also the soldiers who are being captured, um, who, who are often voluntarily surrendering. And I saw a video this morning that was heartbreaking. They, they captured a Russian soldier and apparently uh, the Russian military had confiscated uh, the smartphones from, I, I don't know if it's from all soldiers or from this batch of soldiers, this battalion or what have you. But the idea being the soldiers themselves don't actually know what's going on sort of throughout the rest of Ukraine. And the, and the Ukrainians are showing him 
footage of just like the absolute horrible shit that's happening happening over there and the soldier just breaks down into tears yeah. Yeah. um no. it, it and, just the, a, and that's you know that's the, the the fulcrum on which this is going to um turn yeah. uh is to what degree is the center of gravity of the russian people and the russian military and the russian um soldier uh modern mm -hmm. you know where they're not literally going to be able to inflict harm up close and personal to another modern person. That's, that's you know, sort of one of the theories in, in, that Integral brings to the party. Yeah. Of course, there's going to be these pre-modern, and I say that in a technical way, uh, pre-modern people, thugs, who, you know, they actually, that's what warriors do throughout yeah. history, is they go in and they spear the babies, you know. Uh, but so, so we have this modern uh, soldiers. We have modern uh, and postmodern diplomats and Russians who are all over the world and the billionaires. And <clears throat> I just wonder how much longer this modern you know, center of gravity of Russia. Uh, and I know that, you know, I, I'm not going to opine and where all their centers of gravity are in various lines, but um, how long it's going to take for this red yeah. uh, president, you know, red, blue president, red, amber president. We say amber, Jeff. Uh, yeah, I know we do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's that warrior traditional stage of development. Yeah, where it's, right. You know, and the, and the more we find out about Putin, the more we see that he has a certain holy warrior vibe about it. Oh, 100%. Where he has this mystical view of, of greater Russia that is religious and deeply cellular to him. Yep. I, I watched a, a video this morning on Morning Joe, actually. It was of Tom Brokaw interviewing Putin right after he was um, made, made president, back whenever that was, 80, 90-something, after Yeltsin. And uh, uh, Putin's a young man. And Tom Brokaw asks him something that you don't normally hear Putin talk about his family. He says, so you have two young daughters. What world would you like to see your two young daughters be living in in 20 years? And Putin's reply was not, I want them to be happy. I want them to be free to be whoever they want to be. I want you know, them to live in freedom and liberty. He was like, I, I, I want them to find their Russianness. Mm -hmm. I want them to be Russian. That was his answer. Make Russia and, great. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I get it in the sense that, you know, so at Integral, we're always like, what's the piece of the truth? Even in, you know, the, the most uh, repellent sort of ideology. Yeah. And uh, I would say that there, in, in the sacred world to come, <laughs> which exists in my mind, <laughs> um, that it'll matter very much what Russianness is. That, that it will matter? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I agree. Yes. That there's the, you know, one of the things that traditional people are afraid of about modernity is that it wants to homogenize their culture into this world global culture and they just won't let it. It's too important to them. That's right. But what they need to know, and I don't know if they're capable of knowing this, but at Integral, we can see that <clears throat> that <clears throat> lineage of your blood and soil and family and ancestry and the wind blowing through the trees and the mountains and the earth that we want that and we yeah. want the particular russian version of that yep. we also want the ukrainian version of that and and all you know all we don't want that to be lost so that's a piece of the truth that putin's fighting for 100 percent agree 100 percent yeah. agree that you know particularly um in this, you know, beautiful future to come that you keep opining about and have been for years. And I think, and I agree with you actually is coming, but one of the, I think, qualities of that is that we start producing social holons that are capable of actually integrating the full stack of values, views, et cetera, that exactly. compose them in the first place. Yep. And that amber layer is, I mean, this is- That this traditional is layer. That's right. It's yeah. not this like it's not only this like purely regressive thing. It's not just populated by, you know, religious fundamentalists and zealots and all that. I mean, it is literally the bedrock of civilization itself. 
And if, if, you know, the problem is that the versions of globalism that we have seen emerge in, in you know, over the last 50, 60, 70 years have been very sort of disconnected from that amber, you know, they have been very assimilative in a certain yeah. kind of way. And, and this actually puts, I think, the, the green altitude in a very, very particular challenge that I talked about a lot in uh, my integral justice warrior discussions with Mark Fischler. And that is, you know, green is actually the altitude that is capable of recognizing that, guys, if we're going to be genuinely multicultural, we need to be multicultural, right? We need to actually create a pluralistic space where multiple different kinds of cultures can coexist. The problem, I think, where they get challenged is that many of those cultural identities are themselves necessarily ethnocentric. Yeah. Right? Worldview diversity. That's right. How about right. that? Now, the problem is, I think Green is trying to figure out how do we include these ethnocentric sort of subcultures, yes. right, and allow them to live side by side without them themselves then regressing to ethnocentrism. That's the challenge of Green. And I think this is sort of, you know, I saw we recently published your talk with uh, John Dupuy and Roger Walsh about wokeism and, you know, a dozen other topics. But I think that that is kind of what you guys were leading to in terms of like some of the contradictions of, of wokeism. And, and that to me is one of the big contradictions. They don't actually know how to create a genuinely multi ethnic, diverse, culture and society with, without having this sort of developmental understanding. Yeah. And well, that's the a developmental trend. understanding will be the thing that moves us into integral. That's right. I mean, that'll be where, you know, green, and, it, and, I, and I think a lot of people in green are finding their way there in de facto. You yeah, know, they, I mean, they may not know the maps, that's right. but I see more and more. And tell me if I'm wrong, Corey, because I know you're plugged into to the internet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hive mind here. Are you noticing that there are more people who are just wanting to be post-ideological or they're, they're just tired of right fighting for their side? Yeah, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I think there are there are authentic <laughs> versions of that that are that are emerging. And I also think that there is this sort of um, lazy or even cynical centrism where people want to feel. And, and I think we see this oftentimes in integral communities where um, you know, because we are just so smart and our values are, you know, clearly superior to anyone in the first tier that we kind of, <laughs> that we kind of see ourselves as like, well said. you know, sort of living in this little treehouse above it all and allowing us to kind of, you know, throw barbs down at anyone's commentary. So it's like, you know, oh, the mainstream media says this, so I'm going to find a way to disagree with that. And Joe Biden said this, so I'm going to find a, dis a way to disagree with that. It becomes sort of an integrally informed contrarianism, right? Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think that that kind of results from uh, something that's plaguing the social media era itself, which is a lack of enfoldment, the lack of an ability to say, okay, guys, we can say that everyone is right, but okay, now we have to do the actual hard work of figuring out who's a little bit more right than who and how do we yeah. stack this all together. Um, yeah. and, that, and that brings me back to, I think, you know, what we're talking about with the Amber stage itself and the beauty and the dignity of, of the, and, and, and how necessary it is for us to carefully integrate this stage into our social holons or else globalism really does take us further away from the souls, souls that, of our own souls. That's right. That's it actually can create more suffering. And, and, a, more and a culture soul. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, I love that because, you know, one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite, I guess, euphemisms for that amber stage uh, is something that's often used by my friend, uh, Layman Pascal, and he calls it nation spirit. Yes. I think a lot of us shy away from, from words like nationalism because, yes. you know, the 20th century taught us a few things about that word, but there's something about nation spirit that is yeah. so critically important. And you and I have talked about this in the past in terms of like, you know, I've got some crazy ideas on how to generate nation spirit spirit like i personally think there should be a mandatory peace corps like service in america that takes rich kids poor kids white kids black kids etc putting them all together in the service of something greater than themselves to me that feels like a a healthy way for us to re-secure our amber foundations while while acknowledging that yes we live in a largely martial culture with a very martial history it just sort of there's a there's a natural fit there um so you know th these are the yeah. sorts of, of conversations i'm i'm, I'm no, hoping to see more absolutely. often yeah and i you know i in a way i i want to make this distinction between teal and turquoise mm. here for some reason uh and this this is you know the integral stage has come on in, in, in according to the aqua map 
uh, into Teal, which is sort of the, the first stage of really figuring out the system of systems and evolution itself. And this is the, this is the territory, Corey, where I think you get just real critical of everything. Mm. Because you, you see the piece of the truth that they're getting and the piece of the truth that they're missing. Right. And so you're friendly to all these ideologies, and yet you can see where they're partial. And so you want to critique that. I think that's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. it, it, it does its job. But then at some point, <laughs> yeah. you just realize that the whole damn thing is alive. The whole system is alive. That's it's gorgeous. You know, yeah, I love it. I love it, Jeff. I, I often use, you know, my metaphors that I often use for teal and turquoise is, you know, teal at the teal stage. I think the, the sort of the, the organizing force in a certain kind of way is this idea of self as instrument. Mm -hmm. Right. I need to tune my instrument. And holy cow, I I walked into the teal stage with a very out of tune instrument. And fortunately, the teal stage itself is giving me these practices and perspectives that I can use to get that instrument a little bit more finely tuned. But once you have your tuned instrument, the question is, what do you what do you do with it? Yes. Right. And that's what brings us to turquoise, which, which is more like, you know, cosmos as symphony. And the question there is like, okay, I've done my tuning. How can I participate with the melodies of creation itself? How can I actually allow my music, whatever that happens to me, my, my unique rhythm to, to sort of mix in with this gorgeous and oftentimes devastating uh, uh, universal music that I see and hear everywhere around me. Um, I, I, yeah, 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 beautiful, I, beautiful Corey. Be I think that teal turquoise yeah. distinction is, is really important in yeah. so far as I understand turquoise because I feel yeah. like I'm still kind of, you know. Well, I'm, we can at least think about it, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, one of the things that I, I would uh, reflect on here as I, I think about, you know, going back to the this crisis of the moment is I'm actually... I'm pretty impressed with the mainstream media, hmm. actually, these days. I mean, I think this is what 24-hour news is made for. That's right. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm watching CNN. I'm watching Fox. I'm watching uh, all the BBC, a lot of different uh, inputs. And, um, you know, I think the analysis is good. I think the analysis of Putin is good. Could I add something to every one of them? Yeah, I suppose, mm -hmm. you know, the main thing being that there's a spirit of evolution here. Yeah. You know, the world wants to grow up. Nobody talks about that. <laughs> you know? So I could always add that piece. Mm -hmm. But um, I got to say that I think that the world is going through an amazing education right now. Yeah, I, you know, I was actually just watching a, a podcast on uh, 538 um, yesterday, and they were actually talking about, you know, what has been the response to this on the left and on the right. And they were sort of... Um, I wouldn't say startled. I mean, these guys are pretty good at staying sort of neutral and, and objective. They have their own views, of course, but they do a pretty good job of, of keeping those separate from their analyses. And what they were talking about was like, no, the, the left and the right are basically sort of, you know, on the same page when it comes to this. Yeah. And, you know, when we look at the coverage on Fox, it's really not so dissimilar from the coverage we see yeah. on CNN, et cetera. Now, there's going to be a certain subset of our audience who just says, well, I don't trust any of those assholes. I mean, that's all just sort of propaganda and you know and, and again fair enough there are certainly other let's say heterodox perspectives that we want to bring into the conversation i mean i think that people some folks are asking interesting questions about you know okay it's easy to see putin as the aggressor here but what did nato do that sort of pushed yes. putin into a corner and you never want to trap an animal in a corner you always want to give them a route of escape where were we doing and these are all I think fair questions that you know, we're maybe not seeing so often in, in mainstream media. But I think the point I'm trying to make is it feels to me like everyone is sort of trying to, within the best capacity, trying to come in good faith. Yeah. And maybe that's because it's a war we're not directly involved in. If yeah. we had our skin more directly in this game, maybe it would be a little bit more cynical. I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm seeing the um, um, the reemergence. And, I, and I, I, again, I'm not criticizing it, but a reemergence of the ideological left and right after five or seven days of being roughly on the same page in, in outrage. And, you know, you could see on the left that argument Glenn Greenwald's bringing forth and Noam Chomsky and stuff about, you know, Naomi Klein, the, mm -hmm. 
the, how the capitalist system was cornering them and um, fair enough, mm -hmm. you know? And then there's uh, the people on the right who were like, wait a second, I can't be too excited about the world coming together in favor of the Ukraine because these are the elites again. And these right. are the people who are, you know, this is the, the system of globalization. And, and wait a second, I didn't mean that. I still think that there's, and so, um, you know, fair enough, that's going to happen, but they've both been educated. Yeah. They're, they're both at a, operating at a higher vibe, whether they know it or not. And we'll see where that goes. And I, and I think this is often the case. I think this is often the type of, of, of dynamic that we see playing out whenever something big like this happens. Like there's yeah. an initial sort of, uh, the, the initial collective response is often one of, of again, good faith. Yeah. One of like come, trying to come from our higher COVID and, 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 and so and then later <laughs> it's it's once we start getting sort of acclimated to it then the the, the rock kind of starts to set in and you start seeing the partisan bickering and the the bad faith arguments start coming up and you know I think I think we've seen this multiple times I mean we saw this you know, in, with COVID you know with COVID. When, when everybody when COVID first came on everybody was on the same page and Fauci and good you know and yep. then we found our way that's right 9-11 <laughs> you know, 9-11 being yeah, sort of the biggest example of that in my lifetime yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now it's going to be tough in this case to um, argue for Putin um, and to not be tremendously sympathetic to what's going on, uh, you know, f with the Ukrainian people. Oh, so yeah. I don't know how people, you know, this is going to be a, an extra challenge for the, uh, you know, we'll, we'll certainly have the Republicans blame um, Biden. And you know we'll have the Democrats blame Trump, and you know that song and dance is going to continue. But I, I don't know. We'll and just, I feel, just, I just want to say I feel that's one of my responses. I feel that in my again part of this I think is allowing ourselves to make space for the full spectrum of responses that emerge within us. And and I have a response for every stage of development. I have yes. I have a magenta response to this, which is about the fact that like I have a very close friend. And in fact, colleague, he works with me at Interval Life who lives in Moscow, right? And I'm thankful that I have him in my life because he's able to give me another kind of perspective, you know, as, as sort of I figure out how to make sense of this. Yeah. I am, my, my magenta concern is for him and his, you know, I mean, all of this terrible stuff is happening to Ukraine. And yet my magenta is more concerned about my Russian friend living in Moscow. And I want to make sure like, geez, I hope sanctions don't, you know, fuck with our ability to pay him a salary so that he can continue working for, you know, stuff like that. That's sure, my immediate course. magenta concern. Yes. I have a red response to this, which is like, I just want to see fucking shit get blown up. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a sensationalism of war that's appealing and often leaves us feeling guilty because we can feel our mouth watering a little bit. Yep. And I just want to, you know, suggest like, I don't care how enlightened or evolved you are. You're also a fucking primate and your mouth is going to water a little yeah. bit when you see stuff like this. You're, yeah. a, you're a fancy chimpanzee with a smartphone. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. you're going to have that response and it's okay to be present with that response. My Amber response is like, yeah, I'm looking for who to blame. Which of my perceived political opponents can I blame for this? Fuck you, Trump or other people. Fuck you, Biden. Or you know what I mean? And I, I can feel that. And I want to like almost have an argument with someone and, and tell them how wrong they are. And, um, and I want to be okay with feeling that response. Yep. I feel, you know, and then all the way up, I mean, I've got an orange response. What does this mean to sort of, you know, the our, global our, order that law and yeah, exactly. And like our, our capacity to self-organize and, um, you know, our, our economic systems, like, wow, we are economically fragile enough right now with the supply supply chain. We have actually created an, incredibly fragile orange world, right? Where any disruption actually kind of creates major problems sort of all the way up and down. Um, that's it. That's a huge problem. And I'm, I have economic concerns for that. I have an obvious green concern. I think most of us watching this right now share, which is just like, I hate watching people get victimized and brutalized. And, you know, this is just wrong. And, and, and every humanitarian sort of nerve in my body is telling me it's wrong. And you, you want to tend to that. You want to tend to the victimization. And then there's the teal and, and turquoise responses, which for me are still a little bit uncertain. You know, I mean, I'm asking questions about, 
you know, at the teal level, like how is this going to shape our capacity to self-organize as a global whole on? What is this going to do in terms of like bringing us out of the neoliberal economic age and into whatever this thing is that's coming next down the line? Um, and then, you know, the, tur the turquoise responses are basically everything you've already given voice to, probably more um, capably than I, than, than I can do. Um, so I, yeah. part of it to me is, is noticing all of these responses yeah. and then also noticing that, that severely chaotic times make me want to consolidate to a previous stage of certainty, right? And I'm seeing a lot of this happening. A lot of people are consolidating back to amber. Some people are consolidating back to orange. Some people are consolidating back to green. And I think part of that is because there's a discomfort with allowing these contradictory kind of responses within us. So we just kind of find our favorite first tier absolutism and stick with that um everything else to be damned and and you know part of your talk when with john and roger i can't remember who it was maybe john said something like how amazing is it that we can have it all that we can feel all of this at once yes. and allow it to kind of tear us apart and put us back together again yes. and yes. i just keep coming back to that as sort of the the the, the major integral kind of through line for me yes. Yes, um, yes. That helps me navigate. Well, it, yes, it's it's the procreate urge itself. Yeah, you know that is within us. That once we become conscious of that, that we are growing, evolving beings in a growing, evolving world, cosmos, even um, that uh, we could participate in that. Yeah, and that we can um, we can let ourselves shatter and reintegrate, and we can uh, uh, allow any of these voices. I loved something that Ken said, Ken Wilbur, at a, a conference, one of the Zoom conferences that I heard him at six months or so ago. He often says some pretty smart things. Oh, my God. Dear Ken. Anyway, uh, they, were, they were asking him about the, the integral age. Mm -hmm. And he said something that just stuck with me. It's so great. He said, in the coming integral age, people will realize that they're 12 times smarter than they thought. And I love that. And that's the reason is, is because we see all of these places in this, uh, you know, in our consciousness and um, all of these voices and these impulses and the map really helps us to have clarity. It's like the Google map. You can actually see, oh, wait, there's that and that and that. And the, we, when we can allow them all to have their say. Yes. Uh, in, a, in a larger integrated space, there's a natural wisdom that arises that mm -hmm. really it's not like calculation it's just there and hallelujah yeah no, it's beautiful and I, I think you see that also in another you know whenever um again tragedies like these just like really really brutal things happen in the world it always brings me back to another thing that that ken mentioned i think it was in his piece uh the deconstruction of the world trade center where he's actually talking about the, what, what is the role of violence at integral stages? I mean, aren't we supposed to love our enemy? Aren't we supposed to forgive our enemy, et cetera, et cetera? And I think this brings us back to um, Nomali's practice today and how she was doing Tonglen for, for Putin, which I think is, is beautiful. And, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to make any too big of leaps here, but in this piece that Ken wrote, talking about the relationship of violence and sort of integral policy, et cetera. Um, he, he basically makes the statement that the kindest, most compassionate thing you can do in the face of evil is basically drop a bomb on it. You can pray for it. You can do Tong Len, but <laughs> violence at one stage is always outdone. It's always contained by a bigger, higher violence from the next stage of development. Yeah. Whether that's orange inflicting economic violence in order to constrain Amber violence or amber, or sometimes violence. military violence. Hundred percent. In terms of yeah, yep. no, it's a very subtle point. It's a very slippery point, and it's a very very good point. Yeah, love your enemy, and if you have the chance, shoot him in the head. Is basically yeah. Yeah. sort of what it comes down to. You, yeah. You're not letting letting Hitler do what Hitler's doing, so that you can feel like a more spiritual, empathetic person. Yeah. Um, does not actually make you a more spiritual, empathetic person. You're actually creating more suffering in the world. And that's Jesus, you know, I think that's part of sort of being able to, you know, not just feel the multi-layered responses within us, but then also not allowing that to paralyze us, yep. right? We can get yep. sort of stuck sometimes when it's like, oh, this response is kind of rubbing up against that response. And I just kind of want to freeze. Well, you know, Ken says, you, know, you, you, you still need to take decisive action. Yep. 
no matter how much compassion and goodness is in your heart, um, you still have to take decisive action. And that is Jesus. That is just so hard to wrap your, your heart and your mind around. Yeah, it is. Yeah. The, um, and it's one of the things that is so uh, challenging and uh, about this U Ukraine situation is that um, this is a, you know, a so-called modern country inflicting violence on another modern country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we're, we're habituated to the idea of modern countries like the U.S. inflicting uh, violence on pre-modern countries because mm -hmm. they want them to not get the bomb. They want them to, uh, you know, to punish the Al-Qaeda. You know, there's arguments for that. I actually think that we have outgrown, we've learned so much from that that mm. I, I, I can't imagine the circumstances where we're going to continue to even inflict violence on pre-modern countries. But at least that's been okay historically. What you don't, we've never seen. It's the, it's the golden arches principle. Yeah. No country with the McDonald's has ever attacked another country with the McDonald's. Yep. And, um, and, and until a week ago. That, that's why at the beginning of the show, I heard this is a 20th century style of warfare being conducted in the 21st century. And it's yeah. jarring, I think, for us. And it's very jarring. And there's a lot of commentary mostly coming out of green, well-intentioned green, that I think is probably kind of losing the plot a little bit, where they're trying to make this a racial issue. Like, yeah. how dare you say, you're, you're just saying that these are modern countries because they're white countries. And like, okay, we can have a conversation about why it is that geopolitically developed nations tend to look a certain way than other, like, let's have a talk about that. Let's look at sort of the, the, the history of colonialism that carved up the map in these very various ways. And we can absolutely have that conversation. And let's not throw the damn baby out with the bathwater and acknowledge that it's a little bit different when you have two modern or at least modernizing, right, countries yeah. uh, actually dropping bombs on each other. It is, it just simply is something a little bit different yeah. than what we've seen. Now, that doesn't mean that I take anything away from the United States invasion into, uh, into Iraq, for example. I mean, was that a sovereign nation? Yeah, it was. It was also a bit of a theocracy. I mean, so it's, it's again, it's we're, we're playing at different kind of levels of, of scale here. And that's not to say I justify the invasion of Iraq over 9-11. Now, I, I, I'm with you guys. I'm yeah. with you there. But like we still have to be able to, to allow for these critical differences and these various kinds of social hold-ons and how we expect them to engage with each other. Well, and, and this is where integral um, development is essential. Yeah. Because, and, and you know, again, it's brutal. I mean, to argue that modern countries can violate pre-modern countries or, or conflict violence on them, that's a tough argument. I mean, yeah. that, but development makes that argument. Um, if you don't have development, what do you have then, Corey? You got race, you have hegemony, yeah. you have religion, you have, uh, so that, that's the explanation that, um, you know, that you come up with. Yep, everything's uh, a type. If, if you don't have stages, that means everything's a type. Yeah. If everything's a type, that's how you know you're in flatland. Well put. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So um yeah, it's been interesting actually to see there, there was some uh, kerfuffles about the African Ukrainians not being let through in Poland, and then Poland sent a new envoy, and they um, fixed that. And you know, there's gonna be examples of racism happening because all of this is being implemented by people at all stages of development. Exactly. You know, yep. uh, but it's interesting that the modern world is, you know, looking to fix that and, 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 um, and, you know, and, and then go on TV and talk about how we've let 125 different nationals through nationalities through. Right. Uh, and, uh, and then what, what's going on in Poland and uh, Europe? I mean, isn't it great, Corey, as two American dudes, to see Europe leading the way. Oh, it's awesome. It really is awesome. Um, you know, I, my, my stepdad is, is, is Polish. Um, so I grew up that that's the only, uh, sort of ethnic heritage. I feel like I actually was, was born into, I'm just uh, sort of quite mutt. Otherwise yeah. I'm, I'm well, just, we want Polishness too, man. Yeah, totally. And I, I mean, I, I, grew, I, I'll have you, everyone know that when I was, I think 13 years old, I won a gold medal for Polish drill dancing. It's just really goofy. It, it was it was really fabulous great. but that just shows how sort of wrapped up in, in in polish culture i was as a kid because this was you know this was my stepdad's family and his grandparents came to america from poland and we used to go to the polish falcons convention hall and i, I spent a lot of my childhood sort of within 
Polish culture. Um, it's the only time that you could ever imagine Corey winning a gold medal for dance <laughs> in any context whatsoever. I'm very, uh, very kinesthetically not, not gifted. Um, but yeah, seeing Poland show up the way they have. I mean, I've been watching these videos of, of Polish people greeting Ukrainian refugees as they're coming over the, uh, over the border. And it just, it makes me cry. I mean, yeah. it, again, this is, this is the, be- I, you kind of hate to say the beauty of war, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. But there is beauty in yeah. all of this ugliness, yeah. um, if we have the eye to totally. see. And, and seeing how humanity just comes to the foreground. You know, Mr. Rogers, who I consider a 20th century saint, <laughs> right? Used to say, like, look to the people who are running towards the problem. And that just Aww. redeems, that just redeems, you know, and any, any sense of humanity Corey, lost. Say that again. Instantly redeemed. Look to the people who are running towards the danger. Yeah. Fred Rogers. Right I, right I, can, I consider him a, a 20th century bodhisattva or saint, I guess, because he was yeah, a Christian. Yeah. That's a guy who integrated his amber, orange, and green in such a quiet and beautiful yeah. way while, you know, relanguaging this stuff developmentally for children and like, nope. yeah. You know, he was a Rogers. warrior of evolution for sure. Yep. I, I do think that one of the uh, benefits that will, uh, you know, again, the benefits of just the, the consciousness of being raised here is that, you know, all of this was going on in Syria all along. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're funding this, this sort of things in Yemen right now. The U.S. Mm-hmm. is providing weapons and has been, and, you know, this kind of thing will shine a light on that too. I, I think mean, so. enough with that shit. Yep. I you think know. it's going to, I think there's going to be a halo effect from this. Yeah. For sure. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, in so far as green is pointing out the sort of racial tensions here, I mean, I'll give, I'll give them a partial totally. truth that I do think there are a subset of people who are going to pay more attention when the victims look like they do. I think that's just, there's just sort of natural human nature-ness there. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that's justified, but that's just sort of, you know, that comes with the territory to a certain extent. The question is, what comes next? How is this, how is seeing a 20th century war unfold in a 21st century context, how is this going to collectively across the world change our appetites around warfare itself. And I think that's going to be, and, and around, you know, things like extractive capitalism and, and invading countries, not, you know, based on moral sort of stated moral reasons when it's actually resource extraction and, you know, things like yes. that. I think that our appetite is going to rapidly diminish for this. And, you know, we're seeing like, what is it, Sweden and Finland are now, you know, trying to join NATO and mm-hmm. Ukraine. Just Switzerland. to <laughs> Switzerland's for the first time finally going to freeze the money. Yeah, that's you right. know, right. <laughs> right. Swiss banks have always been so slippery. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it, and it really getting back to Rob's title. I mean, this really is catalyzing something tremendously important in, in you know, what he calls the transformation age. Yeah. When I'd also point out that uh, that it, 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 it's something I think that's very significant that came out of Africa, and that is the ambassador to the UN from Kenya, who gave a very uh, remarkable address to the United Nations last week, where he talked about in Africa, uh, all of our borders violated our tribal boundaries and our religions and our cultures and all of the borders that were uh, drawn by the colonialists uh, to, did not take into account any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And we in Africa have decided that we're going to live with those borders because oh, wow. the alternative is going to be tribal warfare. And that, that's something that we have, we're going to go with it. We're going with the borders. Wow, wow, wow. And so it, I thought it was just a remarkable um, statement of let's just keep moving forward here, people, uh-huh. you know. Yeah. And, what, uh, what a skillful and sophisticated, I mean, that's, you know, they're, 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 they're crunching a lot of um, risk reward sort of, sort of yeah. you know, probabilities when they're coming up with that assessment, like what is ultimately going to reduce the most amount of suffering in the long run. And sometimes exactly. that means you take a Faustian bargain. Yeah. And you work with reality as it is. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, God bless us all, everyone, yeah. Corey. Yeah. Well, this conversation, I think just the exasperation we're feeling at the moment right now, I mean, this is, this is obviously, I think, what just about every, particularly the sorts of people who like to watch shows like this, 
Um, I, I think it's what we're carrying around with us every day. I mean, the, the, the highs and the lows and the beauty and the ugliness and, um, you know, sort of the, the grotesqueness, but also the, the fascination. I mean, wars are just sort of objectively fascinating in a certain yeah. kind of way. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, is how amazing is it that we can carry around all of this within ourselves? No, it's, it's, um, it's an a ongoing challenge and, you know, we do it with God's help. Yeah, no, it's, there's, a, there's that grace piece too. And, you know, I think, Jeff, I just want to, you know, point out once more that I think one of the benefits of allowing ourselves to feel that full spectrum of responses is each one of those responses from whatever altitude within ourselves it's coming from, each of those responses is its own channel of empathy, yeah. right? Like I can empathize with your reaction, your amber, let's say reaction to this, because I have a piece of that within myself. And I can emphasize with your green reaction because I have a piece of that yes. within myself. And I think that that creates just a little bit more, not just interior coherence within ourselves, but it also allows us to convene much more open heartedly with each other, even with people who are holding on to views that we don't disagree with because we're not allowing this to get sort of caught up in our own shadows. And that's, I think, I feel like maybe one of the best ways that um, we can feel like we're doing something in all of this is just like looking within and tracking where some of this wants to become a shadow yeah. or like where you really want to consolidate back to Amber, just so you can have the certainty of someone to blame, to pin all of this on. Yeah, um, and you can, but you, now you have to know it. Then let it go. It. That's right. Yeah. Feel it. Let it go. Feel yeah. it. Let it go. And I, mean, and I love it. what you said about the. Um, I, I think of what Claire Graves talked about. That at integral, you become the universal donor. Yeah. You know, you can deal with everybody. There's a radical friendliness yep. to all views. It, it, it's you know we talk about diversity. Uh, you know, at Green and at diversity at Integral is a diversity of worldviews. It's what you were talking about earlier in the in the show here, that's and um, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It really is. So, that all right. That damn curse, man. I know. I, I'm getting a little tired. I'm getting a little exhausted of the interesting times. I know. Enough with these interesting times. I'm ready for some boring times. <laughs> well, this isn't this isn't one of them. So, no. uh, yeah. So, we'll keep an eye on things. Again, it's Wednesday, March 2nd, early afternoon in Colorado. We'll see what the day brings. And God bless us all. Yeah. Thank God you bless you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I love you, man. I love you, too. Love everybody. See you next time.